what a rough week. Let me tell you. First things first. I did not expect this game that just finished up not even a minute ago to be moved to Monday night. I thought it was going to be Sunday afternoon, but something must have happened, you know, in Duke City to where it's like, yeah, he had a Monday night game. <laughs> I know. I'm already going to be very annoyed because there are several Monday night games of the next few weeks. Uh, there's one next Monday night in the NAL. There's one on the 15th, even though it's a non-conference game in the NAL. And then there's a Monday night game in July for the IFL. So, you know, I'm, I'm not particularly happy about that. That kind of throws things off a little bit, you know, definitely throws things off when I wanted to do this yesterday. I think yesterday would have been, you know, appropriate. But then again, we didn't – if we didn't get the news we got today, then, well, we, we probably would have been sitting here for a week, you know, waiting for me to talk about, you know, some of this stuff. So, yeah, um, let's start in the AIF because, you know, this happened. And, you know, one thing that I just – it just didn't click for me that there was problems in Mississippi. First things first, you know, you had the AIF posting – you know, things on their social medias, but they don't post anything about Mississippi. That, that was one thing they did not really do at all. Um, there was the whole thing with the head coach spotlight things. If y'all, if y'all remember those, there wasn't one on Mississippi. Um, the Raiders, um, we've known them for the past couple of years now. They haven't been able to play games, at least, you know, not very many, kind of like West Michigan, but West Michigan won't go anywhere, you know, They'll, they'll stay at Trinity Health Arena. You know, Mississippi, on the other hand, has had some rough-looking turfs, some rough-looking, you know, um, netting and, and, and goalposts, you know, and they it, it's happened in the past. It's happened in the past. So, you know, what we saw Saturday night as Corpus Christi came into town with about, I don't know, like 20 to 35 yards of a field just kind of just on the field, like 35 yards of the field is covered, not all of it. And then, you know, the rest of it is surrounded by dirt. And then, you know, when they actually try to get it up and apparently even, you know, players try to play on this surface. So yeah, all of that was, it was time to nix Mississippi in the bud for good. Um, honestly, it's for the better. I think that the Mississippi Raiders are finally gone. You know, they've had ownership issues. They've had, I've heard some other things as well, but this, this was a team that, you know, has had a shaky history anyway. So anything that has come out about them, you know, about not playing players and not doing this and not doing that, you know, it's might as well believe that, you know, so, yeah, that was that. So there's been a couple of schedule adjustments, by the way. Um, Cedar Rapids is going to take on Corpus Christi on April the 14th, and Columbus will take on Cedar Rapids on May the 10th. Those are two new games added to the schedule. Most All of the AIF teams have six lead games now. I believe that's how that goes. My math should be mathing correctly, but if it's, if it's not, I don't know. Um, there is one game that is unaccounted for, and that is Amarillo's game on May the 18th. We will see what that game will be. It's more than likely going to be a non-league opponent. Um, otherwise, the five teams that are left in the AAF are, you know, can honestly, you know, please, I'm, 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 I'm just going to say it. Just, you know, it, it's, I think we need to start consolidating. I know, I know nobody wants to hear me say that after, you know, years and years of, you know, me ragging on people talking about, oh, well, the leagues need to merge and stuff like that. But I think for the betterment of, I think for the betterment of the game, you know, some of these teams have to start moving. You know, we have to have, we have to have the 2023, 2024 offseason again this season after this season you know we have to have it again but yeah 
So yeah, that was that for the AF. Nothing too, nothing too crazy. Just you know, same old stuff. That's why they're a bit below the NAL and the IFL right now. Speaking of the NAL, there was just one, you know, league game and the other game, which you know, both games have extensive highlights. I need you to go check out. You know, my boy Duke on around the NAL. He's been doing that weekly for. The last couple weeks now, and he's doing a damn good job at getting those highlights in. Um, but yeah, I only caught the end of the Omaha Carolina game 54 43. Omaha's unbeaten streak continues, and then Colorado yet again struggled this time with Cedar Rapids. I know, I know, but hey, Speedy Clark and company, they 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 balled out, they balled out. Um, unfortunately, there was a couple plays late. You know, the bad snap, and, you know, there, there was some bad snaps in that game. But ultimately, you know, the Spartans got the win, and that's what's important, I guess, for Colorado. Honestly, this is a team that, you know, the way Fred Shaw and company have been, you know, trotting out, you know, this, this is looking like a team that's, you know, if it weren't for Topeka, you know, folding, I feel like this is the team that's probably going to be, you know, the team that's going to get beat up on. I'm just going to be real with y'all because the, the the scoring output from this team is kind of, eh. you know, yeah, they put up 70 in their first game, but it was against the non-league opponent. We don't count those, but you know, and, but this was a this was a team that is, you know, just slightly below your levels just slightly below and you can only win by nine nine at least tommy armstrong had seven touchdowns man that that's about the only good thing that came out of this so yeah there's a couple nal games next weekend fortunately one of them is on monday night so i'm gonna be real Oh, I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm, I hope we do not have to do this at ten o'clock again, Central Time, because that that would be really annoying. But yeah, anyhow, fine and dandy. We're moving along with the season. We have two NAL games next week. AIF has like one or two games next week again due to the schedule adjustments. On to the IFL, which is probably the most difficult to talk about because you know the games this week oh my goodness production values atrocious we're talking these games had some errors in them we're talking the Massachusetts Pirate stream was atrocious we're talking Duke City's game tonight had the teams moving at three frames per second. We're talking Frisco stream had like the whole first quarter missing. Green Bay's was fine. Arizona's was okay. Um, yeah, it was just rough. It was just rough all around for the leagues this week. Just really rough to watch. It's very unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Uh this is rough. And, and and for and for Duke City, you know, they're gonna have to play in just a couple days. You know, you look at the scores again, Sioux Falls, Quad City, you know, that went to OT, Tulsa and Frisco, very surprising that Tulsa. That was probably the worst part of this whole thing was that Tulsa blew a lead and did one of the worst clock management decisions I think I've ever seen in my entire life. Jacksonville, you know, getting Basically, you know, just kind of they just couldn't they just kind of got little brothered right there for a second. I don't want to say it like that, but I know Jacksonville fans are gonna be mad at me. I know, I know, I know, I know. But like to only score 21 points? Oh my goodness. That's terrible. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, you know, Arizona, you know, yeah, Lorenzo Brown came back surprisingly. Apparently there was like you know there was rumors that he was gonna go to Sioux Falls, but you know he came on down to Arizona because of Snead's injury. I don't know how much longer he'll be out. 
Yeah. And yet Vegas still got the W. And it was a real good game. Probably the best, probably the best game of the weekend, aside from the Omaha Carolina game. Um, you know, Frisco somehow pulling out the win was crazy. Um, Green Bay getting a big victory against Iowa. Very crazy stuff. And again, San Diego, Duke City. Honestly, these two teams, uh, you know, Nate Davis is in San Diego, but it doesn't really feel like it because of the way he played tonight. It, it was rough. Um, so, yeah, a rough week for the IFL. Hopefully they rebound with the games next week because it's going to be a long, long week, you know, and we start – on the, and we start, Duke City is going to have, you know, four days, well, like three and a half days to rest up, and then they come to Frisco. And guess who's also coming to Frisco? Me. I'm going to be in the Comerica Center. So we will see yet again what in the world happens, you know, when big boy sports comes into the arena because, you know, when I went to Dickie's Arena on March the 1st, there was like 700 people there, and then Panther City reported it as like 2,400 people. We will see this. We will probably see the same results in Frisco, although I'm probably going to give them. I'm probably even 1,500. I guarantee you they will report like more than 1,500 people at the game. And I'm going to be straight up with you. I'm going to take a photo, at least one photo. I don't know if I'll be doing video. Um, or anything like that, but I'm definitely going to be in Frisco at the Comerica Center on Friday night, which is Good Friday, so I don't have to work. And that'll that'll basically do it for that. And then Saturday, Saturday morning, so I'm gonna come back, maybe take like an Uber or something back home, you know, or whatever, you know. Take a nice short little nap, you know, get up at 7 a.m. and do a little collab with the boys over at Shady Sports Network. You know, hope the Ringo Football Nation would do that too. I know he's been asking me to shout him out on these videos. But yeah, uh, he's also at 500 subscribers, by the way. So go ahead and give him some love. And with all that being said, can't wait for next week. I mean, it's going to start on Friday night. Oh, my goodness. What a, what, what a Friday it's going to be. I cannot wait for this. I really can't because has Duke City ever beat Frisco? <laughs> I don't know, man. <sighs> That'll do it for me. I'll see you all next Monday night after the Idaho-Carolina game, which is probably going to be like 930. <laughs> <laughs>